All right, boys and girls, here's another little quick section on here. We had to add input tuning. Because if you saw the last video and some of the pictures, you'll see that um, we had a toroidal input tuning section here that had been uh, damaged by one of the previous hands, as I will call it. Um, so what we did was we put, you know, the variable tuner in there that comes over to our heterodyne network down here that mixes our bias and input signal but it's also going under this if you saw the last video you see that it came around here and it goes to an air variable right here which is just tuning our input but we had to shield it because on top of this right here is our load output is our load tuner for the output so I can't you can't have your input tuning trying to stabilize what's coming in while you got you know two kilowatts of PEP over the top of it getting loaded up in an air variable so when you guys do this kind of stuff you got to remember you, you got to think about how what you're doing is going to affect what's already there and if you're intending on using whatever's being affected you better figure out how to get past it in this situation you know this whole amp's been a, a, a challenge with the space limitations but you know in the hands of a lesser place it'd probably be a problem but it's not it, and it is a problem here it's just gonna take some time but here sometimes you gotta make shit you know you can't you know most guys will just stick that tuner in there and hope it works no put it in there isolate it make sure you got it done because normally that tuner lives on the bottom side of one of these amps and in this one we can't achieve that so we had to make it its own little cubby hole shielded with metal tape now i'm not so worried about it getting saturated with rf now it's time to finish putting our, oh, just dropped it, automatic king circuit in. This guy is going in there, and I think we're going to hide him over here somewhere. And so it comes through one of these holes to come over here and fire our regular relay, which is being rewired a little bit because for the triode, uh, the third pole turns something else off and on. Whatever that metering was, we're not going to use. It's been taken out. But we do need to turn the screen off and on. So the tube doesn't sit there and break in oscillation. So what we're going to do is that third pole on here, when this when this relay clamps, is going to turn our 300 volts on simultaneously to the to the tubes. So there's where we're at so far. So there it is. It's all encapsulated. It's got its own little shielded lifestyle in there. We've got our automatic keying relay set up, ready to go. The bottom side is looking pretty good. Like in the last video, I showed you we got. Our AC is going to come in here and here, and it's going to give us our negative bias, which comes from rides down here, gets fed into this coil. Our input is going to come up from up here and get fed into this coil. And then this is just going off to ground. So what's going to happen is the negative bias is somehow pulls the RF across here. You've got a nice mix, and then your bias and your RF are, are heterodyne and shot into the control grid of the tube so then down here is our screen circuit um which is this is not here on a pride and we got my partner over here working on a pride right now but in a pride you'll see that tuner on the back i don't i don't use those because they they blow a lot i make that it's supposed to be a 600 ohm load i make that 600 ohm load out of six 100 ohm two watt resistors and then i pick my bias voltage off where i want it that's closest enough and believe it or not it's a lot more stable and it's cheaper than a bunch of zener diodes and making or you know a real you can make a very stable circuit it just costs a little more it takes a little more time um this i like because it's simple it's stable and it's it's inexpensive um and it fits i mean you gotta remember guys this is my whole working area in this thing i got a half inch of space to put an entire half of an amp in and we pulled it off so now the other thing i'm concerned about is i may have to shield the top of this coil because this is still input right here and i'm a little concerned once again think about how everything's gonna affect everything else i'm a little concerned about that sitting right next to my tubes so i think i'm gonna make a little bitty uh hat that goes around it give it a little jimmy hat and cover it with some metal tape and I think then we're going to go ahead and move on. Now that I'm sitting here looking at that, I think that's exactly what we're going to do because it doesn't make sense for me to go through all the work to make sure that my air variable isn't getting saturated when my heterodyne coil is sitting right next to the tubes. That's kind of silly. I'm going to have to go ahead and shield that too. So that's where we're at with that. Once again, think about what's going on. Um, there is not a pattern for what I'm doing to this amp. 
you know, we're, 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 we're flying by the seat of our ass around here on this one, basically trying to turn a paperweight into something functional again. And, you know, there was no foresight in them, you know, knowing that the tubes were not going to be available at some point. Um, you, know, we, you know, today we assume shit's going to get changed and get thrown away and you get new stuff. But back when they made this stuff, it was made to use until you die and your kids die. Well, the one thing they failed to keep into consideration was this tube was going to get canceled, gone, can't get it. The only option for it that I could find is a bigger one, a bigger triode, an 8857, I believe. But that's an $850 tube, and this power supply will only carry one of them, internally giving you half the power. He'd still have to manually key it. It'd just be a mess. So now when we're done, like I said, he can put anything from a 150B to a 400A in here, a pair of them. And he's not going to have to key it manually. His metering's still going to work decent. So, you know, he's still going to have a nice functional amp. It's, you know, this, this Dentron that turned in. You know, back in the day, this was almost a $3,000 amp in the late 70s, early 80s. Back in that day, this was a $2,500 piece. So what do you think a piece built like this should be worth today? It shouldn't die. So we're going to, you know, we got to do what we got to do. So next is I'm going to shield rf shield that coil and give us some safety and then we are going to proceed with making our high our uh, parasitic chokes for the top putting the automatic keying circuit in put our load cap back in it's going to be time to check some voltages at that point and get the we i get the transformer on the back obviously and light up these other circuits that we've made but you can see a lot of hand done work's been done in here you know, the tube sockets have been changed the high voltage choke has been rewound um, you know, we had to make our, our mixer circuit for the input. We had to make an input tuning circuit, isolate it. Automatic keying circuits had to be made. Um, basically, this whole side of the amp is getting rewired, and two more power supply sections added to the bottom side of it to achieve removing a set of obsolete triodes so that we can use some readily available tetrodes. That's what we're doing. Now it's low drive, automatic key. And any tube you want to put in it, you can get on this block without having to wait for it to come from Ukraine or whatever. And this one you can't even get. So that was in here, you can't even get, so it doesn't matter. This was a paperweight. So that's where we're at. We're going to put this in the series of videos, take some pictures, and we're going to move on. Like I said, we're going to give our coil there a little metal jimmy hat, make sure he's good, and get on with the rest of it. So seven threes. We'll see you.
Okay, another quick video. All right, we've um we found out we had another goofy tube. We've gotten rid of it. It's out of play. So now we have a match pair of pinks in there, Svetlana's. Um, two brand new tubes. We had brand new tubes before, but we had an oscillation problem. We had to fix that, as you see in the last video. So now it is time to uh, put our fan shroud in. Now what we're doing is, you'll notice that there's no holes anywhere in here, okay? The reason for that is that we're going to have a dual push-pull fan system on here, okay? In the bottom right here, one fan is going to blow in at a slight angle towards the bottom of this deck at a speed that is faster than the top fan um, so that it can pressurize inside this cavity. When you key, and that one was going to run all the time down here, but when you key, there's going to be another small one up here. As the tubes generate heat, when you key, it'll ambiently suck all that hot air out of there. When you unkey, that fan will shut off, and you'll still have the other one blowing through. Okay, so we're doing a push-pull system. And on this one, we are going to do a speedy new video. You know, we haven't done a speedy section in a while where you guys just watch me put something in in fast motion. But we got us a new high-definition camera for the computer, a new boom put up. So we're going we're gonna to put the fan shroud in this thing with the speedy video. And this will be the final video at the end of this for the Dentron 2500. Um, the pre-triode, it was a triode. It was a multi-band amp. The triodes are no longer available. 8875s, 3CX 400As, whatever you want to call them, no longer available. So we changed it to a tetrode amp. Tetrode amps are, tetrodes are generally more fussy. Okay. So, you know, we've had to do this a couple of times. Actually, I ended up doing what my friend calls just swamping the circuit with parasitic chokes. Everything's got a parasitic choke on it. Everything under here is done with real kick ass wire. Okay, double wound filament choke. Um, we got our bias taps and everything here. So this amp is done. About, I think last time we keyed it up, it was 80 watt dead key, and it's just landing on 2,000 a peak just fine. So, watch the fast motion video. We're about to put the uh, fan shroud in. All right, here we go. This seems like a good place to stop. Now, you guys have been seeing me testing this thing and playing with this thing with um, metal ceramic tubes and no fans. Um, you notice we kept all the keys short. This is how the fan system on this particular unit is going to work. Okay. This fan here is a very ambient sounding fan that will run constantly as soon as you turn the amp on. Okay. 
what's going to happen is, if you notice, we sealed off underneath inside this 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 RF chamber is now all sealed with the metal tape and glue and whatever we can seal it with. If you need to work on this amp from now on, all the guy's going to do is cut the metal tape, hinge this up, and you've got access to everything on the tube. This whole thing doesn't have to come out. So, however, you will have to have some of this on hand to put it back in or some duct tape or something to reseal this top section. Um, but what's going to happen is this one is going to run every just, just as long as the amp is on, nice and quiet. This one will kick in when you key. When the tubes start making heat, this thing will kick in, suck the ambient heat out. When you're done, when you unkey, it's going to shut off. But this one is going to keep the cabin pressurized and the ambient air moving off the tubes. Here's the thing. We're not using these tubes in commercial broadcast, so we don't need to rail them with CFM constantly. Um, in the application of intermittent service, the way we're using these tubes, we don't have to cool them like that. All we have to do is get that ambient warm air off of the tubes. So that's what we're doing. So this bottom one's going to blow in right across the deck and keep it all moving around in there. And the only place it could come out is right here, even when this fan's not running in a little bit over here in this section. But I ain't worried about that because this is all keen and control and I ain't going to go around all that. But this, this should be more than sufficient to keep these 400 A's cool enough to do their job. So, and the cool thing is, it all goes inside the unit. You're never even going to see this fan system once I put the lids on. So, there's your fan system. There's your pressurized fan system. Like I said, if this unit needs to be worked on later, we cut the tape, open this, hinge this open, and we have access to everything we need under there. We don't have to pull all this out again. So, I put all this in last because I wanted to see the amp running and have all my placement done first. So, now we are putting the ventilation in and there will be one more test video and uh we'll be taking this thing back to the customer so um there it is this dentron is coming along beautifully and when we do the next video you're going to see the face with the meters and everything working beautiful radio beautiful amplifier i mean so there you go keep watching Okay, here we go. Fan system is in. Okay. We've turned out now these bulbs. He's got to get some more of these bulbs because these are so old. They just dropped out on us. Um, and they're special, so he's got to take care of that. Um, however, like I said, his meters work. So the left is relative output. Oh, I turned my radio off. The left is relative output. And we've got it turned down a little bit because he's going to be driving this with a radio. I'm going to build him, which is going to let this thing get a little hotter. So, uh, so he's got a little bit there to read his to read his forward output, which he should be using a watt meter anyway. And then there's your current on the uh, shows your plate current. The only thing that doesn't work is the gr is the grid current for the tube. That's the last button. It's not going to do anything because when we changed the tubes, we uh, we uh, lost that function because we went from triodes to tetrodes. Now, here's our fan system. The fan system is installed and working. This one runs all the time. It blows into this chamber. And what you're going to notice is this fan ain't hardly, this fan don't move. This fan don't move until... You key. So you take off. Now, what's happening here is inside under here, this whole thing is pressurized. There's no air getting out anywhere else besides here. So right now we're keeping it pressurized with the bottom fan. The air is at least moving around and pulling it off the tubes. But when you key, you're getting that extra help to pull the hot air out. So the fan system is in. High low switch works. Meters work. Um... Input tuning and all that works. We are on the five thousand. We're on five thousand watt scale. Ah, uh, that was twenty two hundred watts right there. Ah, uh, yo, hanging out at two thousand. 
this box is healthy. I turned it down and rebiased it and retuned the tank coil and had to turn it down again. And when I turned it down, that's what it turned down to. He's probably going to get, once I get his radio built, 25 consistent, maybe 27.50 of peak. So here you go, buddy Roe. What was the paperweight is now 10.8 straight, 409 strong, ready to go back to the customer. Probably outlive me and him. So if you guys have one of these amps with the 8875s or the 3CX400s, you can't get them no more. If you find some, you're lucky. Um, but keep in mind, when those are blown, you're fucked. So <clears throat> the conversion for what we did was, once again, let's go over this. This was a triode amp which means it had to be manually keyed, fed with 100 watts. Um, and it did have the band switch in it to go from 80 to 10 meters, or 80 to 10, but this guy's not a ham guy, so we ripped that out because we needed the room for all this extra stuff to put the tetrode in. So what happened was, let's give you a quick overview. It was a triode. Triodes require only high voltage filament. That's the only two power supplies it needs. But a tetrode, being a low drive needs some more voltages to be able to be effective. In other words, screen and functional bias. Um, what I call active bias, something you can control and turn up and down or, <coughs> excuse me, manipulate one way or another. So once all that was added in, we added the transformer on the back. Now he has a pair of 4CX400As in here, which are kind of loafing. I did not set this amp up to run full tilt boogie balls out. I don't want him blowing this amp up again, okay? Because he blows it up again. I, at least at this time, it'll be easy to fix. But here's the thing. When we're done with this conversion, guys, not only can you just get tubes that are available, you've got four choices. You can go from 150B, 250B, 250R, 300, or 400A. Five different tubes. You can stab right in here, tune it up, and go. Done. So now not only is it versatile, it keys itself. The meters work. The standby, when you turn it on, it warms the filaments up, turns the high voltage on. Everything works like the ham amp's supposed to. However, we ripped its panties off and made it 11 meters only. So, you guys that have these amps, we do do this conversion. It's not only this one that does it. There's, I got an alpha in the corner over there. I got to do, it has the same tubes. If you have an amp that utilizes these tubes and you are not able to talk on it because you can't find no tubes, Okay, let's 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 get it. Let's get down to reality. In 1977, this was a $2,500 piece. Today, today I found one on eBay, $3,200. Now this one was dead. One worth 32 cents. Okay, we do an an $800 conversion. Where are you going to buy a 2,500 watt amp that's half brand new with brand new tubes with a warranty? And still have your classic Dentron, all other stuff. You're not going to get that for 800 bucks nowhere. You guys, if you got these amps and they're dead, send them to me. Or send them to somebody that's got enough gumption to go in there and spend the time to, to revitalize, re, re, redo, convert, whatever you want to call it. Bring this amp back to life. These are amps worth having. So, And if you guys got them with no tubes in them, you don't want to fuck with them, call me. I'm trying to find some of these chassis because I'm going to convert some more of these and just sell them. So, um, that's it, man. You know, and it ends up being a one piece. It don't get no better than this, guys. I'm so proud of this amp. Yes, I've been sticking my chest out on every one of these videos because I deserve it. This, this should not have ever come to pass. This is an impossibility. It's a freaking miracle. The eighth wonder of the world is sitting right here on my bench with a pair of Tetrodes in it. So... You guys, you want to keep playing with the monkeys that don't know what to do, them screwdriver monkeys. Y'all keep playing with them. Oh, you can't get the tubes no more. I'm sorry. How about fucking use your brain and re-engineer the amplifier so this customer can use this stuff? Rest of you guys better catch up with me or I'm going to bury y'all. Have a good day. Seven trees.